Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. <laughs> Sorry, doing some last minute prep for this. In the last video, in the last video, we just did some shopping. We bought a handful of odds and ends for our home including workbenches to improve our various crafting skills when we're in those rooms. We'll probably be taking advantage of, in particular, the electronics and tailoring later on in this series. We won't really be needing them anytime soon, but it's good to have them in advance, and we have the money as well lying around. We might as well put it to good use at this point. We crafted ourselves a much better... well, much better? A better Falcion than what we were using last time. Still has a rapid reloader, still has a laser sight, does 7 more max damage, I think 1 or 2 more min damage upgrade, and has about another 200 something durability to it. We'll probably be using this for the rest of the game, unless we uh, maybe move over to a 9mm later, or try out the hawker that I constructed later, uh, later as well. We've got the mushroom brew as well for the dude, and we're going to go ahead and bring it to him now, complete this quest, and it's time for us to try to complete the dude's rift quest. So let's get started with this. How's it going, man? I opened the locker. His eyes turned to fire. And? And? What'd you find, man? Mushroom brew. Freaking mushroom brew. 20 bottles! Why is it in a warehouse full of traps? And mushroom brew? How did you really know about all this? Visions, man. Visions. I don't know about the mines, though. I didn't put them there, if that's what you're implying. Um. Can I have the broom? The brew now? Uh. Just take it. Give him the brew. Thank you very much, man. Now, if you'd excuse me, I have to test the quality of this beauty. <laughs> He's not getting the chance to taste the nectar, however. In an instant, he becomes voiceless. His joyful eyes turn vacant and his smile collapses into utter slack-jawedness. He then slumps forward with his hair drooping over and concealing his face, thus marking the beginning of another vision, another session. Fortunately, this time around, his words reach you with more clarity than previously. Holmes, we must find caves. We must reach, like, seriously, a lot of walking. Ingredients, we must fetch. <laughs> journey, journey, journey. He lifts his head. Life settles back into his desolate eyes, and a smile reconstructs itself on his drooling, on, out of a drooling mess. His eyes focus, and so do his thoughts. But, but first we must drink, man. It's as though a spark has ignited his gaze, the life in him, and he snaps out of it. Only now does he appear to be fully himself again. He gawks at you, confuses a hopper in front of a distorted mirror, and smiles. How's it going, man? Damn, time sure flies when you're enjoying the brew, man. Dude, you had another vision. Don't you remember anything, or does your mind just malfunction every time that happens? Uh... Dude? Right, the vision, I... You know, I've been getting a lot of visions involving you lately. I mean, before it was like twice a year, maybe, but now it's like... All of them. You've been seeing me in visions before you met me. Duh. What did I do with this vision? He checks himself for some brew, producing it a moment later with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. The table is now littered with bottles of mushroom brew. Ten for you, ten for him. The vision. It is difficult to explain this one. It requires a prepared mind. And to get to that point, you're gonna need some help, man. Are you ready? I'm ready. You aren't sure how much time has passed, but what you are sure of is that this wretched gravity has now become your new nemesis. The vilest, most evil of all forces of nature simply won't leave you be. Its imperceptible claws are toying with you, prodding you, bullying you into kissing the unwashed floor. And what may be the worst of all, its ultimate objective seems to be to deprive you of your precious liquor. 
by puppeteering your hands and spilling it all over the table. Dude seems to be resisting the Force's devious influence, stodic siege by terror itself. The passing patriots observe your struggle, but the more you feel their stares, the less you give a rat's ass. This guy appears out of thin air. His lips move, producing sound. Everything he's saying is slurred. Words fuse into a very long one. You still nod. He seems familiar, maybe. But hold it. He's talking to Dude. Dude answers in a foreign language. The man leaves. Hey. As soon as you speak, a brew appears on the table before you. You feel sudden, overwhelming thirst. Never mind. Continue drinking. Your head is light. Your body is heavy. The gravity is tipping your balance in its own favor. You'd punch it if you could, but it hurt the last time you tried. Pain. That annoying guy materializes again. Can't this man speak properly? He doesn't seem pleased. His scowl speaks volumes. His words are meaningless. You mumble something to him. His stare shines brighter than an exploding pile up of thousand trains. Dude takes over and extinguishes the flames. Unwillingly, the man nods and disappears. What's that guy's pr pr problems? More bottles ambush you as you glance at the table. Seductive, enticing, marvelous. I, I just, I, I can't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Your nose is full of dust while the pool of your drool feels warm on your face. You raise your head only to slam it against the ceiling. The ceiling it is not, though, but the underside of a table. As you slowly regain your consciousness, a voice above you beckons you. Can you hear me? You find your way from underneath the table and climb up to your chair. Then you sit down. Hey, man. How you feeling? Oh, oh. I take that as a positive answer. And that means it's working, man. That means it's working. I was scared for a moment, you know, and not because of the, uh, like, things that happened, but because we ran out of brew. I had two more on me. Those tasted odd, man. Maybe they were spoiled, but once we went through that, I had to, like, get some more. What things? And the barkeeper was a little worried, man, so he came to, like, check up on us. A few times. It's okay. Now, man, listen. Hey, listen. We're exactly where we want to be. We have been elevated to the summit of human consciousness, man. In this state, our minds are capable of seeing over the thick mists of our earthly senses and understand that our reality is so much different from how we normally perceive it. And that it's not the only one. New curves, new details, new rules, new worlds. And once our minds finally fathom our reality in its true form, only then will our eyes be able to see the rifts in its very fabric through which we can reach its every corner. Well, maybe not every corner, but... At least five, or even beyond. This is crucial, man. Look around and tell me, how does everything appear to you? It, 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 it's all a bit blurry and sh sh shaky. There, that's what we need. Now we perceive the world alike. You ask me what you did in this vision, and I will show you, and you will do it again. Show, don't tell. Some rogue geezer at the station always used to yell, and he was right. He drank battery acid and died a week after that, but he was right. That, that sounds not nice. What's the first thing we need to, to do to... I, I mean, to, dude. The thing is, in the vision, in it I saw homes, caves, a lot of walking, ingredients of some kind, a journey. You and me, man, together on a journey. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's our first step? It's simple. We find homes. Our homes? No, my homes. I live in many homes, like this many. He begins raising his digits one at a time. Once he reaches five, he stops. More than this many. Yeah. Uh, what are we looking for in these, these homes? Look, man, listen. The thing about the visions is that some of them can get pretty fuzzy. The longer they are, the fuzzier they get, mostly. It's like... You know you gotta do something, but you don't know what that is or why, but you always feel like you're doing the right thing once you're actually there. And then it all makes sense. 
It's the intrigue man and the unknown which make Vision so intriguing and unknown. You know what I mean, man? Therefore, I don't know exactly where we're going to find there, but for sure it's going to lead us to our next location, our next step in the Vision. Probably. Okay, follow me. We're going to start with the core, because that's the only one I can remember right now. Follow Dude. This is the place, man. Here we go. What in the filthy barrels? Hey, dude's mom. Mm, what's cooking? What? That's not my mother, man. Hey! An ancient, shriveled woman angrily waves her ladle at you. Pipe working sons of drop offs! If I wanted some zone ass bastards to barge into my home, I would have never left the drop zone! You boys leave this place now, you! Or else I'm gonna open a can of zone out and show you how this grandma dominates pipe liquors like you! Beat it now, y'all! Excuse me, man, but this place used to be mine, you know? So you're actually a barge into my place, you. Nasty woman! We just need to, like, Find something important and we're like gone. What you say, Dross Face? Your place? Get out of here! You too, barrel stuffer! Uh, how about we give you a, 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 few, a, a few charons for your trouble? Would it then be okay to us to take a peek? Her eyes flare up. Charons? What are you offering exactly? F -f 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 50 charons. Not bad. But the thing you want is so important that it ought to be worth some more, right? One hundred? She pockets the coins before you even realize you gave it to her. Dominating. You're free to do your business. Just be quick and don't make no mess, dig. Or else... She threatens you with her ladle. He looks around the room. Man, this place looks like... So much different. Now start searching. And if you find anything that looks important, it probably is. Let's go, man. Let's go. Nod slowly as not to fall over. Alright, everyone. So this was one of those amazing quests where there's a ton of stuff to look at. But none of the stuff you can interact with by holding down tab is the correct thing to look at. We'll still look at a few things, though. The dusty box has nothing but three pairs of socks in it. Red, blue, and white. You feel numerous small items between the cushions, none of which seem to be the reason dude brought you here, you feel. Oops, we're not going to open the box, we're not going to open the freezer. Some stinky boots. They smell vile. One label reads boar musk. Other than that, these are just basic spices. You still here, boy? It's empty, and there is nothing hidden beneath it. These shrooms are crawling with fungus and that By the way, everyone, we currently have this debuff. Heavy intoxication. This is what happens when you get wasted with dude. All your base attributes have been reduced by four. Cheers. These are our current stats. We might be able to use our pistol, but it's going to be uh, probably not very effective. Nothing behind it but a spider family. Anything in the bathroom? Besides being horribly unpractical in this state, there is nothing odd about this mirror. Nothing but a, nothing but junk in this pile of junk. Yep. So what we actually need to do is click on this. Yep, which doesn't highlight when you hold down the button. This panel looks somewhat odd to your restless eyes. After staring at it for a while, swaying from left to right like an indecisive pendulum, you notice that this panel is slightly convex in comparison to the rest. Touch it. The panel is loosely secured to the wall and could be removed without too much trouble, judge. And for some strange reason, the thought of riding it down a flight of stairs races through your mind. It provokes a mischievous smile, but you quickly forget what it was you were smiling about. Remove the panel. You got something? You can do it! What are you two doing there? Easy as pie. You place a panel aside. Hordes of creepy crawlies instantly scatter, 
Within a few moments, the wall behind the panel was clear, except... The safe! Oh, I haven't seen you in years! Yeah, that's what we're looking for, man! I don't have the key anymore. Uh, how do I open it, then? Well, knowing myself, there were two possible options. Either I hid the key somewhere in this room, or I locked the safe with the key inside. Don't ask, but that has happened a few times. So, either look for the key or try picking the lock or something. I'll... I'll... Dead... I'll tr damn it! I'll, I'll try. So let's see if we have what it takes to pick the lock. We might be able to do this without having to find the key. And we did. The key, by the way, is also not anywhere on screen. If you hold down tab, it is here on this tile. An unsaturated psionic catalyst is inside that safe. And... I found an un unstrapitated psionic catalyst. There was nothing else inside. An unsaturated... That's it! His eyes turns distant. It's all coming back to me, man. To enter a reality rift, your mind mustn't only be capable of perceiving the rift, but also be safely traveling through it. Only if the mind knows which reality lies behind the rift will it be able to reach it. Otherwise, your body will pass freely. The mind will stay behind. You will be split. Your mind will fizzle out since there is no brain to maintain its existence, while your aimless body will roam the world beyond until it rots. In the end, both will be joined again in, like, nothingness. But even if you're properly prepared, fragments of your mind, memories and emotions, might still stay behind and you won't be able to get them back. These fragments will be lost forever, I think. Man, my head hurts from all this remembering. But what's important is that the unsaturated psionic catalyst is a component, an ingredient, yes, necessary preparing the mind for rift walking. Yeah, rift walking, that's the term. The brood lets you see, the catalyst lets you enter. Uh, how do you how do you know all these things? And have you have you been rift walking before? I'm the dude, I know things. My head is like this bony bowl of cerebral cerebrospinal stew with a large nervous dumpling in the middle. Yet I am really nervous. You know what I mean, man? And can't you see I've been working on this for who knows how many years? I must have riff walked too, like yeah. Trust me, and the visions, always trust the visions. I'm sorry, trust me, and the visions, always trust the visions. I, I dig, I dig. So, so we done here? Yeah, man. Just make sure you bring the chaos with you. We're gonna need it. What's our next stop? Uh, yeah, man. I, though the answer to that would be here. Oh well, we'll do some walking until it dawns on me or something. You ready to go? Let's go, dude. I'm ready. Okay, now, uh, how exactly did we get inside this place? You know, we were very fortunate I fell and hit my head on that concrete slab or else I would have never remembered this place existed. Ever. So many memories are just, like, flooding in now. Man, man. So you used to live here too? Used to. There are many reasons why I leave my homes. People wanting to kill me, robotic ghosts following me around, nightmarish creatures appearing in my house, it being too damn noisy. The usual stuff, man. I can't remember why I left this place in particular, though. It must have been the bandits throwing down grenades on me or something. Because I remember, I remember one time waking up to a grenade blast. Yeah. Anyway, let's go in. I can't wait to see my old place again. Alright. Let's go. Okay, now follow me. Man, I remember it all. This place used to be so comfy. I had space to relax, to work, to sleep in peace and quiet. Well, except when the city and ants decided to invade. There's my desk. There's my workshop and sleeping quarters. There's my old sofa. My fridge. And my rug. Did I have a rug here? Ah, and there's my lab. My lab! What we're after's gotta be in there. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. Damn it. I need the key card. I think... I... I think I even saw that in the vision. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. Why do I have to lock everything and not bring the keys with me? Move over. I'm gonna hack it. If you can't find the key card, I'll let you try it then. Otherwise, yeah. No. I don't remember it, whether it was in this home or somewhere else that I made a hacking-proof system which zaps you if you try fiddling with it. So I'd rather not risk your life just yet. We need the key card, man. Well, it's gotta be around here somewhere. Well, I'll take a look around. I'm gonna stand here and figure out how to process all the memories from the past. It's hard work, man. Hard work. So all about this place, uh, there are things to search, just like the last place. But in particular, there are these numbers that you will find. The numbers don't help you find the key card, but they'll be useful later if you want to solve another puzzle we're about to get in a different way. I think the key card's right in the desk. There's Biocorp written on this key card, albeit with a few letters barely being readable. The rest of the card has been completely scratched off, and there's even one burn mark on the side. Found the card, man? Hey, here you go. Give him the key card. I remember this. It's one of those old cards I had on me since forever. Hey, I remember the programming it to work with this lock. I've done a lot of ad hoc stuff during my lifetime, like, like the time I found myself in a burrow nest with only a lighter and a loaf of root bread. Man, dude's got to think fast in those kinds of situations. Stop yapping and open the damn door, dude. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the journey continues. As soon as dude closes the door, growling, grunting, shrieking, and thunderous pounding violates your eardrums. As if the pounding in your head from all the brew wasn't enough. The creatures, distorted by their unfortunate fate and your intoxication combined, are trying to break down the door. It holds, for now. Meanwhile, dude is about to be staring through you, slowly nodding. Yeah, that's why. His quiet voice nearly gets drowned out by the monstrous tantrum coming from the other side. An earthquake woke me up. Then I heard the mutants. Then I ran away. My pajamas. No, wait, I was naked. Oh. Well, let me at him, dude. I'll show him who's boss. Under the influence, man? Bruce good for a lot of things, but fighting ain't one of them. You really gouged your eye out on that rusty bar in the core. Now you want to fight mutants? The mutants continue pounding at the door. See? They're pissed off more than us, and whoever is more pissed off is likely to win a fight. Trust me, and like... There's more of them than us, and they got claws and acid bellies. I mean, like, I, like, respect your this dedication, but let's try to find a different way to overcome this. You with me, man? You got a point. Got any ideas? Well, there's this console here, but it ain't working properly. He observed it for a few seconds before continuing. Yeah, yeah, I think a bunch of zappers, zap spiders, coil spiders, tiny cousins, got inside and messed up the electronics. Mini buggers of annoyance and doom. Now the characters are all jumbled up because of it. I may have even figured out how to use it despite the problem, but I don't know anymore. What does the console do? Can you remember? No. Probably something important. I can't know everything, man. My head just can't contain all the knowledge of this world. Right. I'll take a look at it. A steady growl seeps through the cracks in the wall, and it gets louder and louder. Now that I think about it, it might not be safe to stand here. I think I'll, like, uh, wait outside. How about you give me the key card to the lab? Oh yeah, just don't do anything stupid like open the door before you figure out a way to take care of the mutants. You don't, don't want to see you dead in the vision or otherwise. Here you go, man. Hands you the key card. Good luck. If he shuts and I think the door is locked and we can't open it. Oh, we can open it. Okay. So, uh, there's some very angry mutants in here. And until we get power, we can't spy them. So this is the puzzle that those numbers are for. There's three sequences of numbers, and they are used in tandem to access this console, or rather to get uh, to have it do something in particular. Before you is a dusty console displaying oddly corrupted content. Namely, you see lines of letters and numbers, yet these are arranged in a way that conveys no apparent meaning. And you are positive that this isn't due to the state you're in. 
Rather, that is an actual reflection of some kind of malfunction. Below the display, the console contains a few simple buttons labeled on, off, reset, activate, and deactivate, and it seems like these buttons, too, haven't been touched in years, judging by the thick coating of dust covering them. Alright, so... I, which you guys can't see in the background here, have pulled up one of my old videos where I ran through this, and I left a comment pinned by myself here, so I could always just remember what buttons to press. In these sequences of characters we see down here are numbers, and you're supposed to add these numbers up, and when you do so, they will total one of the numbers in the sequence of numbers that we saw earlier. In this case, uh, what we're looking for is the first number in any of the sequences. If we find that number, then we found the sequence we need to decode, and we'll get another sequence of numbers, that's supposed to be the second number, and then the third, that's the third number. So, I'm just going to go ahead and just enter the correct uh, entries. We want 6, 4, 2. And, we see this here, and this means we've made some progress. We want 8, 5, 3. And then we want 8, 6, Six. All right, that's it. Let's activate it. The pipes passing through the walls begin to rattle violently, stabilizing after a couple of seconds, and then you hear the frigid hissing of the gas filling the room across. All right, and now we just wait here, and they'll all eventually die. So I think actually what I'll do is I'll cut the recording here, and when I come back, they'll all be dead. So give me a few seconds, everyone. The hissing is the first to stop. Then the pipes start to rattle, as they did before, until they produce no more sound. Hey, everyone! All right, I'm back. It's the next day. Good morning. I just ate breakfast. Mm. You might have heard me trying to stifle some yawns <laughs> last night. I was playing it close to midnight. Uh, the mutants are all dead, and so now we're just going to wait around a little bit longer until all of the gas is gone. So, I'll be back again. Give me a few seconds. Alright, gas is gone. Let's see what was inside this room. Besides the mutants, obviously. I don't think any of them have an oddity we haven't seen before, but we'll check all the corpses anyway. How many years do you guys think they were stuck in there for? My goodness, they could not have been happy. All right, so nothing on them themselves. It looks like there is some kind of gas grenade inside. Wouldn't want to break this one. Cryo chamber. All of these, that's what the all these are. It's empty. This one's also empty. There's some odd puppy looking fungi inside. It's frozen solid though. can't interact with anything else but the cryo chambers, it looks like. There's a bottle inside. Probably a mushroom brew. There's some bright red tissue inside. What could it be? Inside this is a groin guard, a doctor's coat, and some morphine. The morphine, I think, is the only thing we need from that locker. Now, before I leave this place. I'm going to check to see if there's anything maybe hidden in it. The tool chest is full of all kinds of tools. Some barely one piece and some as good as new. Each of the three bottles is as good as new with a... is marked with a number. Wow. These are 79, 55, and 11. There's a few W2C rounds still in the Eternal Magazine. Pick them up. Still reeks some mushroom brew and pork. I don't know what mushroom brew smells like. I'm guessing it's this beer. A bunch of explosive barrels. Guess we didn't check the fridge. Two side boosters and six mushroom brew. We'll take all that with us. All right, looks like that was everything in here.
Nothing out here either. You're alive, man! And the mutants? They are not. Alright. I guess I should have underestimated you. You're like one totally tough guy. Now let's go. We gotta check the lab. I already checked the lab. A few cryo chambers in the locker was all I, fa I saw. And inside the locker, I found some morphine, a lab coat, and for some strange reason, a groin guard. That dude's gotta keep his man boulders safe at all times. In this terrible world, a rat hound could bite them off, a lurker could chop them off, and a train could run you over. And that includes your sensitives. It's the testicular genocide waiting to happen, man. You gotta be prepared for it. So wherever I go, I make sure I got protection. Now, what else did you say was in that locker? Morphine and a lab coat. That's it! Again, as in his house in Core City, dude's gaze turns distant. Once you prepare the mind, you can enter a rift. The mind is safe, but then your body is the one at risk while you're walking through the guts of the universe trying to, like, reach the exit rift. Uh, that's the scientific name for it, exit rift. Anyways, untold horrors await those who enter. Abrasive winds will tear your flesh away. Toxic fumes will incinerate your lungs, and blinding darkness will totally mess up your eyes. Powerful radiation will bombard your very cells, malforming them into these, like, tumor-manufacturing organic machines. But it's not just that. There are living things there, too, hiding in the shadows. You'll be walking this, like, dark, desolate landscape. It surrounds you from all sides, man, because the sky and the ground are one and the same. The air is like alive, and out of it claws, teeth, blades, tentacles, and sometimes even wings take shape. Those will cut you, bite you, pierce you, whack you, flap at you, and do all kinds of deadly unpleasantries. And you will hear nothing but demonic shrieking and the sound of your flesh being torn apart. If you're not prepared, your body will be destroyed. It's not good, man. But there is a way to avoid all that, too. Morphine. It relieves the pain. If you don't feel pain, it means your body is not getting hurt. Yeah, yeah, it's logical. And it feels like pulling a decayed tooth after anti yourself with lots of brew. You feel something moving in your jaw, cracking and all that. No pain. You know all that? It's the same once you enter the rift. You'll feel all these things around you pushing and nudging, but there's no pain, so you're not getting hurt. Of course, the difference is that you don't end up missing a tooth there. Or like, skin, flesh, and bones. Why do things have to be so confusing with you, dude? He largely ignores your words. The brood lets you see, the catalyst lets you enter, the morphine lets you survive. There's one more, man. It's at the tip of my tongue. I can't... He takes an empty bottle, hits himself in the head, and again, after a pause, he continues. Nothing. Well, it worked the last time I tried. Ugh. Rubs his head. What were those cryo chambers for, dude? It hurts, man. What I. Caves! It's in the caves! Yeah! He draws a map in the air with his figure, mumbles to himself. East, north, left. He continues mumbling. Dude, what the hell? Are you even listening to me? Yeah, man, sorry, but we gotta figure all this out. You've done a lot, yet we're still in the Holmes phase of the journey. According to the vision, that is, and if the vision shows it, it must be true. We're gonna get we're getting closer and closer to the end, man. I'll give you all the answers once we get to the final home. I promise. We gotta rush now, as the brew is slowly evaporating from us. We still need in it. I did it need it in, actually. It's like the worst thing in the world to lose something when you need it the most, you know what I mean? Oh, don't forget to bring that morphine with you. He looks around with noticeable sadness in his eyes. I hate to leave this place so quickly. I've done a lot of work here. A lot. Uh, you ready to go? I'm ready. Great. Now get ready to boost me up so I can reach those ladders. I'll give you a hand too, and no. I won't drop you again, man. I promise. Sorry I dropped you again, man, but we're finally here. I fell on my head, but we're finally here. It's like strange how remembering old memories makes you feel so good. I remember vomiting right here after one nasty crawler stung me. Ah. 
And then I... It's not here, man. It's over there. Yeah, sorry, man. Follow me. Here it is. Here is what? The entrance, man. Don't you see it? No. <laughs> Let the brew inside you help you observe that wall from the summit of your consciousness. I'm feeling pretty sober now. Damn it, man. Just take a better look again. See? There is still a brew within you, man. I gotta hand it to you, dude. You live in the oddest places. Well, dude's gotta live somewhere. And all the good places have either been taken over by people with lots of guns or creatures with lots of teeth. Or psi abilities. Besides, seclusion allows for peace and quiet. But you never want to be too remote. How else are you gonna require this stuff, huh? Anyway, how about you go and take a look inside? Oh, wait here. Oh, what horrors haunt your home this time, I wonder. Yeah. Well, things kind of dawned on me a few minutes ago, as I, just like we got close to the entrance. Because of that, it's not difficult to, like, suspect such a thing after all we've been through. I attract strange things, living and otherwise. No offense. And? What's inside? I can't remember exactly. But do know things have gone terribly wrong inside. If something attacks you, kill it. Profound. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good luck in there. We're getting closer and closer to the bottom of it all, man. All right. So let's have an eel sandwich and head on in. Now, everyone, I've just realized we've been playing the game for like 40 minutes or so at this point. So we're probably not going to do the Grey Army base in this video. That will That will happen in the next one. All right, now this, I mean, I've been a little worried about some of the earlier battles, but we've been able to handle everything pretty well. This is actually going to be kind of tricky. Okay. So the cats are the problem. They're the things that will attack us soon. So, I'm just going to go ahead and ambush them first, before they get a chance to kill us. Alright, three of them dead. I think there's like... Seven? Uh, I think there's four of them left? That was not a good spot to hide. I can't make it down there. Okay, we we lived, thankfully. Let's uh, take some morphine. And oh, there's five of them left. Okay, they should ah uh, yeah, they should only take one bullet, but it's gonna be tough to hit them. There's actually six of them left. We should totally use bullet time for this. Okay. Combat over. Once again. Both grenades landed exactly where I needed them to land. I think for the remainder of this video, series, the entire playlist, I won't complain about the RNG and be missing at all. Because just how I seem to notice how often I miss in this game... I also notice when the game is being exceedingly kind to me, 
which it is absolutely being. I'm making this game look a lot easier than it actually is. Okay, normally I would investigate the rest of the dude's place. Actually, we'll take a peek around, but we'll actually ask dude to come in here this time. Before I, f before I begin poking about the place. Let's make sure there's no more cats in here. Alright! Area is completely clear. Hey, man. Found any evils inside? Laser cats. Laser cats. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, uh, took care of them, right? Yep. Hi, energy vermin. So it's like, safe to go inside? I think unless there's something else waiting. Maybe be plasma dogs? Uh, don't be ridiculous. Well, like, let's go. You helped dude start a fire in the barrel in front of you with the items you found in his long abandoned home. Now you both stand there, observing the disorderly dance of the flames you've just brought to life. This turbulent interplay is ever-changing, sometimes fierce, sometimes timid. And where some flames rise above the rest, others retreat low and disappear. But as long as there is something to keep it alive, the fire will keep on burning. As you absorb the much-needed warmth after traversing hearts and cold, all these primal emotions start digging their way up from the abyssal depths into your inner being. You feel safe, you feel calm, and you feel enthralled. Right now, you need nothing more than the warm caress, the music of combustion, and the tranquilizing light display. And if you feed the fire, and take care of the fire, you generally feel that it will take care of you as well. I'm hungry! Thu pulls out a small metal skewer with some hopper meat on it and puts it over the flame. Got some for you, too, if you want it, man. Uh, no thanks. Oh, well. So, now what do we do? Well, we'll wait for the meat to roast, and then we'll continue with the journey, man. I saw it in the visions. I'm standing here roasting some hopper while you're standing right there. Everything's like according to the visions so far, so don't worry. And we're through most of the phases. We've been to my homes, caves. He looks around and nods. Ingredients. The last one's got to be here. It's all progressing slowly. So it all seems to be revolving around us going through these reality rifts. Yeah, you see, man, I know some people think I'm a bit on the other side of the rails. I can see it in people, man. But I do everything for a reason. The visions guide me, and not a single one of them has ever let me down. I'm not going to turn tail if I see something I don't like. Like? Even if we enter a rift and we end up in the middle of a war between intergalactic sentient and centipedes and crustacean-like fungoid monsters and end up being blown to tiny charred bits, it's for a reason. You always know the right thing to say, dude. Thanks, man. But did you see us after we went through a rift in the vision? I mostly remember seeing you, but I don't recall seeing anything too specific. The whole reason was a bit fuzzy, man, but we pulled through. So far... Things just reveal themselves as we go along, and every event becomes, like, crystal clear in my brain once I actually see it. Yeah. Everything I had seen in the vision got clear. So far. And it's like... Oh, the meat is done. Dude stares at the sizzling meat for a second before pulling it off a piece... Before pulling off a piece of it from the skewer and putting it in his mouth. Not even a second passes as he spits it into the fire. Damn, damn, damn it to hell! This is the worst hopper I've ever tasted. I'd rather, like... Lick... Gun-covered rust off a shack and junkyard to eat this, man. He throws the skewer with the rest of the meat into the fire. Burn. He then turns to us. Well, man, we gotta continue the journey. We got some rest, but now's the time to get going. His eyes scan the place. Man, it hasn't changed much since I left. Except that everything here smells like cat excrement. It used to smell of brew. How <laughs> things have changed. Well, you know what you gotta do. Go and search the place for the final ingredient we need, man. It's here. How about you answer a couple of questions about all we've been through? Well, I suppose I owe it to you, man. Go ahead. Ask. Who are you actually, dude? Why are you doing all of this science, if one can call it that? You know who I am. I'm dude, man. Damn it, your memory's really starting to deteriorate. Like, 
We should do something about it. Now, the experiments, observation engineering, it's, it's what I do. It's what I gotta do, man. It's this very strong inner urge and visions, man. The visions. The visions show distant places and space and, like, time. And I have to reach them. See them. Touch them for real. Or whatever else the vision showed me. It's a part of me that you can't tear out and replace with something else because I'll, like, die. Like when you're, you tear out a hopper's heart. Dies. Get it, man? Hopper's, like, die. But why laser cats? Well, like, why, like, make water purifiers and bark cleansers? Because we can? Because we must. Think about it, man. And the answer will come to you. Cheers. What happens when we finally come upon a rift? How do we interact with it? You, like, come up to it and, uh... Well, I'll tell you when you find me the last ingredient. I got a few more things to remember. How many homes have you actually had? Oh, well, you don't know. I know I had them, but I could barely remember these three. You know it, man. You remember our journey. The good thing is that the memories are, like, tied to each other, like with organic strings. You pull one memory out and the rest come out to greet you. Some strings come out severed. That's kind of sad sometimes, because you know it had to have been attached to, to something. Maybe it was nice. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't. What you gotta do is learn how to tie new memories to these, like, strings and stop worrying about it and enjoy a nice, tasty, cold brew. Cheers, man. Well, what do you remember about this home? I remember... Revelation. Progress. And freaking cold. The place was damp and moldy even back then. The cats were being rowdy all the time. But I made some incredible progress here. Yep. I think... A vision brought me here. Must have been, yeah. Because this cave, like, sucks hard, man. It's horrible. And so remote. And the worst thing is, I think some people had already lived here when I came. I wasn't the one who built all this. No, no. I just hauled some equipment here. Enough brewed a few cats and started working. Then the cats started working. Meow, meow. Pew, pew. Tss. My hair on fire. No. Run. Drop my brew. Almost died picking it up. Run. Ah, crawler. Let me tell you, I didn't see any of that in the vision, but still, you know, everything, like, happens for a reason, man. Because a new vision will pick up right where the previous one ended. Always. Some call it destiny. But I call it... I call it... Like... He tries to outline some shape with his hands, but even he himself seems confused by what he has just done. Eh. Give me some time. I'll remember it for sure. Alright, dude. Can you tell me something interesting? Did I ever talk to you about burrowers? They are fascinating, highly social creatures. Dangerous, but still fascinating. I should know, I lived with them for a month. That's how I got this scar. He points to his forehead. Take a closer look at his forehead. No matter how hard you look, you fail to see any scars. All in all, respect your territory. Don't mess with them, and they won't mess with you. Unless they see you. Cheers! Alright dude, I'm on it. All right, we gotta find another ingredient somewhere here. So let's take a peek around. A bed surrounded by liquor shelves. Yep, dude used to live here. I think we found another one of his places where we had been out and about. So many mushrooms have grown inside that you could just add some water and start a fire under it. You spin the blades with your finger, but alas. Yeah, another Barcelona chair. chair. What does Barcelona even mean? It's been scratched to oblivion. Yet it is still upright, only because its base has been screwed into the counter. So the cats have been busy. A psionic field counter. It's stuck at the top of the range. Nothing you do has any effect on the device. I keep half expecting to find something I've never find, found before in here by hovering the necker mouse cursor over things. All right, what have we got in here? A uh, bunch of components we don't need. More mushroom brew. In fact, I think we'll just leave some of this mushroom brew behind. Dog crates. This explains how he got the cats here. And there were ten of them, right? Uh, I think we killed nine. We 
saw a bucket in this little room. This must be the bathroom. It, for taking a shower, you suspect there's still some water inside and a dead bug. I don't know if I find that funny, but I also, also find that realistic. Some notes. Those are probably what we want. Most of them are just scribblings. But there is one that reads, Do not overcharge the cats. It appears that new elements have been added to the table, but you can't figure out what they are due to damage and grime. Two desaturated psionic inhalants, a mind shroom, two morphines, and two more psionic catalysts. And this is what we need. Gyometrin. While we're here, I guess we'll grab the taurine antidotes and napalm C. Gas tank. Something moved inside when you knocked. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> Let's not stick around in there then. Okay. Let's talk with Dude. You found what I asked of you? I found some chemicals in your desk. Taurine, some napalm C, and trimetrin. Any one of those the last ingredient we need? Taurine. That's for the heart. Napalm C? That's for, like, incinerating stuff. Trimetrin, trimetrin, uh, trimetrin! That's it! And yet again, he answers with a distant gaze. If you know how it looks, you can see it. If you know where you're going, it will be there. If you feel no pain, you cannot get hurt. Once you reach an exit rift, you will not be able to pass. It's the surface tension of the living air. Living air. You fall into it when you enter, so you easily break the surface, like jumping in a lake. But if you want to get out, it's like an ant stuck in a drop of water. Dark water. Deadly water. Water that wants to mutilate you. You'll be stuck inside, watching a whole different world that you can't reach. Then the morphine loses its effect. That is why you need Dryomitrin. It's toxic. And it hurts what is living. It will hurt the living air. But it won't hurt you because you don't feel pain. The damage done to, like, the living air will create a temporary vacuum. But that doesn't suffocate you or anything like that. Because, like, in our reality, in the... In the... The in-between. Yeah, that's the name. The in-between. In there, vacuum is freedom from the living air. There's no tension anymore, so you can walk through the exit rifts and reach your destination. The brew lets you see, the catalyst lets you enter, the morphine lets you survive, the geometrin lets you escape. That's everything we need. We're gonna be doing some rift walking. Damn, dude. So all we need to do is mix those up and we're good to go, right? First of all, we need two juices. One for you, one for me. So that's two bottles of brew. Two measures of unsaturated psionic catalyst, Two of morphine, and two of geometrin. Yeah. Juices? Yeah, that's what it's called. The juice. You mix all these things up, and you get the juice. You drink the juice, then you rift walk. Now, how to, like, mix ingredients is a real issue now. You add too much morphine, you faint in the in-between dimension. You add too little brew, you can't see the exit rift. You add too much catalyst, your mind moves faster than your body does. You add battery acid. You die. Did you keep some notes on how to make the juice? You're asking me that after all we've been through? Like, what the hell, man? I don't know, man. Maybe I did. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. <laughs> did you check around the lab or the super concealed crack in the wall no one could ever find? No. I'll go take another look. Yep, man. Check the lab. All right. Uh, hold on. I'm just curious if there is a crack in the wall that no one could ever find now. I mean, I have no clue where it would be. And I'd have to do this for every every single pixel. I would take a long time to do, Tim. Okay. Well, I found a stack of notes in the lab. Most of them look like long-winded scribblings to me, except for one that says not to overcharge the cats. And that's damn good advice. Not as good as, like, not trying to drink battery acid, but damn good nonetheless. 
As for the long-winded scribblings, I'll check them out, man, but I doubt that it's there. Recipes, now those I usually write simply and concisely. Like, for example, 17 milligrams of unsaturated cyanic catalyst, 55 milligrams of morphine, 1 milligram of geometrin, 300 millimeters of mushroom brew. You take the catalyst and... He pauses, and you see him turn distant again. He scratches his head a few times, then his jaw, then he nods and says a few hmms before finally, at this point quite predictably, snapping his fingers and flashing a smile. Got it, man! I know how to make the juice! I just read the whole recipe! Oh, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, listen now. We got the recipe for the juice, and we got all the ingredients, but that's one big but. But what comes next could be like anything. We should got pretty blurry at this point. I know we got a rift walk. I don't know where that's going to take us. So if you want to take a break and, like, stock up or have a cold brew, do it now. Come see me when you're ready, man. I'll, like, be in the lab. I've got all the ingredients we need to make the juice right here. I'm ready to search for the rifts. Awesome, man. Let us begin. Start making the juice with dude. There, the equipment's ready. Okay, man, place the brew. Now, hand me the catalyst. Now the morphine. Now wipe my forehead. Okay, okay. Give me the geometric. The juice, yes, I like did it. We did it, man. He hands you your bottle of the juice. There you go, man. Now when you drink this, know that it could make you a bit sick or partially paralyzed, but only until you get used to it. Could, not should. Okay, I'll go first. He presses his bottle against his lips and pours the juice into his mouth. A few gulps later, the bottle is empty. Ah, oh, it's warm. But my eyes, they're open again, man. Naturally, you observe him for any side effects, but they are absent. It is though he drank a normal, run-of-the-mill bottle of mushroom brew. Now, just as you stare at him inquisitively, so does he stare at you blankly. What? No sickness or paralysis? I didn't say I could get, like, sick or paralyzed. You could get sick or paralyzed. My body can take any alcohol-based liquid, or solid matter, actually, and it won't hurt me one bit. You men, on the other hand, you gotta be careful. Well, now it's my turn to take the juice, I guess. Yeah, after that, we're gonna be looking for a rift. I think there's one right here in my home. But the brew kind of lost its effect, so I'm not sure. But I think I saw this, like, well, rift, man. So get that in your system, and let's start searching. You'll know a rift when you see it. How long does the effect last? He shrugs. We'll see. It's not like you just instinctively and inexplicitly know how long something's gonna last. It varies from person to person, man. Let's go find that rift. Okay, dude. Alright, everyone. Uh, the game's gonna autosave at this point. Alright, so... Let's go over here. And you might have seen it before, but here's that little symbol. This is where the rift's going to be. And in the next episode, we'll drink the juice, and we'll go and see where it leads us, which is the Great Army Base. So I will see you guys then. Thanks for watching, everyone. And take care.